If a few years ago the debate was over whether we ought to use technology in education, today we've moved far beyond. The focus is now on how to best use technology to benefit the max students, how to leverage it to our advantage. Technology, after all, dominating every other aspect of our lives. How can we expect education not to try and keep up? That's, of course, the big question. A special panel now joining me today, Colonel Gopal Karunakaran, CEO of Shivnada School, with us. Uh, Mr. Shantanu Prakash, Chairman and Managing Director of uh, EduComp, also here. Uh, Sanjit Parohit, Founder, CEO of IProf India. And Ratnesh Kumar Jha, Managing Director, Cambridge University, South, Cambridge University Press, South Asia. Thanks all so much uh, for being with us. <laughs> Colonel Karunakaran, in fact, I could start by asking you, there are so many parents who've always sort of been a bit reluctant or a bit apprehensive, if not reluctant, about just how much is too much when we talk about technology. Who do you think is the best person to decide how much is too much in the classroom when we talk about technology? I think the singular answer to that is uh, nobody knows. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not too sure. I, I don't think uh, when we started the school three years ago, this is one of the foremost questions we asked ourselves. How much technology, which age do we start with technology inside the classroom? What is the ideal type of content? Mm. Uh, how do we enable the teachers to be able to use it? Mm. Because they are not mm. digitally native mm. as much as the generation, which right. is the post the millennium generation. So I think uh, in some ways, uh, I would say that we are not too sure. Mm. So it's the, the education fraternity, the parent community, the students themselves who right. need to sort of figure it the out. stakeholders then which sort of need get to together. Figure it out. But right. for example, we took a very conscious decision that in nursery and KG there will be no technology. Mm. So, you know, that's sort of a starting point. We said there's just too much happening in their lives. Mm. It's too passive a medium. They must, as I was talking to uh, Shantanu, they must learn to use things with their hands and right. be creative and right. spend time reflection. Right. Well, we can yeah. look at that because we've had many parents writing into us saying, you know, who decides I can't get my child off this deck and mm -hmm. how much is too much and iPads in the classroom. So we'll look at those kind of concerns a little later. But coming back, uh, you know, to our focus on, I mean, there's no getting away from it, uh, is there, Shantanu? It is a reality. The world is ac accepting it. We have to stand up and sort of grab the opportunity. What do you believe has been a one big success about adapting technology in the classroom and what uh, quickly would be the one big failure? Well, I would say, Natasha, that if you look at a typical Indian classroom, hmm. I would even go so far to say that it's dysfunctional. Hmm. You have 40 to 50 kids on an average in one right. classroom right. crammed into a small space about 400 right. square feet or so. Hmm. Teachers in India mm. are probably, if you look at a professional spectrum, mm. are way down on how much we pay them. Right. We should be paying right. them more. Right. So we are not able to attract the best teachers, the uh, best and human capital huge uh, to, the, uh, right. to the profession. Mm. And the curriculum just keeps, keeps getting loaded on every year. Mm. And on top of it, if you layer the fact mm. that parents have this insane motivation mm. for their kids to keep doing better and better, you have all the settings now. of a dysfunctional classroom. Mm. So when, when Educom started, we mm. said we need to figure out mm. how can we make these teachers mm. productive in the classroom. Mm. A technology was an answer. Mm. Okay, we started 10 years back. In mm. fact, we are celebrating 10 years of digital classroom in India uh, this year. Yeah. And now there are about 300,000 mm. uh, classrooms across the country mm. that use technology every day. Mm. So take a typical class, for example. You're teaching photosynthesis mm. or you're teaching some abstract concept mm. in math. Mm. Without technology, you have to revert to chalk and talk. Mm. And Gopal mentioned about these kids being digital natives. Mm. So, you know, I call them three screen kids. Mm. So mm -hmm. they are, they look at the TV screen. Mm. Okay, probably they watch NDTV. Okay. <laughs> we hope they, so. <laughs> <laughs> talk they, about starting young. <laughs> you know, they, they have their cell phone screens. Right. Okay, right. and they, then they have their tablet. Mm. So these kids respond differently mm. to audio visual exactly. than right. kids of my generation right. or the generation right. previous to that. Right. Yeah. That's, of course, one aspect of that. That's very hard thing to know. But Mr. Purohit, there are of course lots of others who sort of say, you know, look at uh, students enrolling for online courses. How many are actually finishing them? How many are wrapping up? What's the sort of concrete result? What are we looking at? How would you sort of uh, respond to that? Okay. Yeah. We focus mainly on supplemental education, hmm. which is behind, b beyond the classroom. Right, right. And that's where we get complete data about how much people are using. Hmm. I'll give you a data. We have about 30 lakh students which used IPROF last year. Hmm. And average uses is seven minutes per day, supplemental okay. education. Right. So it's about one hour a week. Hmm. A person, average student studies five hour a week hmm. for supplemental education. So 20% of time they are already spending on iProf Study Buddy app. Hmm. Hmm. So what we see is a significant move towards 
the uh, screen based learning rather than a teacher based learning right now when you mention shortage in the classroom hmm. there is a acute shortage for self study right. there is no right. teachers available in the evening right. and we all know that classroom education is not sufficient student right. student has to come home in fact that was going to be my next point really that 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 really is is proof that you need to supplement what's happening in the classroom and the need to look beyond just just sticking to the classroom and the, you know sort of interaction there that's right is and, not good enough and that's right and that's where the biggest boon has happened for india is the smartphones hmm. because now the smartphones in our target group under 25 mm. is about 30% people have it mm. and it's another 120 million smartphones are coming mm. so we are a mobile learning super store mm. so you have right. all the courses so that's where people download and use it on their smartphones mm. and i think that's also where a lot of the aspirational young indians are are now there those that's you know right. tier 2 tier 3 towns that are sort of trying to also raise the bar for themselves but you know you you mentioned tier 2 tier 3 i was going, going to get that in a little later but i i will now mr uh with you perhaps which is you know we've also sort of looked at of course uh, uh, mr parohit they're talking about tier 2 tier 3 and, and sm small town india also wanting to be part of this learning but what about the many 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 small towns and villages where you know with our internet penetration still under the scanner we're talking about digital india and all of that but of course we still have a long long way to go how do we sort of get everyone on board so i see it from a two perspective one is technology as an enabler mm. be the engagement of student or the teacher mm. or the whole classroom going up so the mm. whole classroom productivity or engagement going up i would see that if there is an aspirational mm. ge gesture which has been put forward by mm. the government mm. and say that okay for by 2025 will mm. be a digital progressive and everywhere an internet is going to happen mm. the challenge which it throws to us that mm. how do we as a provider of education mm. really start thinking in terms of engagement going up right high quality content uh, exactly. teaching cap right. cap capab capability going up right. so all of that becomes the challenge for right. us so if you put the assumption that all of other things really works well which right. is internet penetration etc etc right. will not happen mm. then we start solving the problem right. now those are very aspirational and those exactly. are challenges which we have at this point in time and i'm we are sure all of us are working collectively to right. solve that problem but the 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 main theme still remains what's the content who's the teacher how you enabling them how exactly. you increasing the whole uh, quality there exactly shantanu how much of this do you find absolutely frustrating honestly <laughs> when you look well, at the challenge yeah the internet infrastructure in mm. india mm. has been frustrating for a while mm. i mean i have 3g on my phone most mm. of the time it works like 2g exactly okay and this is something that you go to a small town i mean we can't even get voice calls forget mm. getting mm. like consistent mm. data mm. on the phone mm. uh, apart from that mm. honestly i don't see any challenge I and i and we mm. all know for sure that this is only going to get better and mm. better mm. it's going to get better it's going to get more affordable mm. uh, i was recently in a small town i was in panipat mm. i visit schools a lot uh, went to grade 6 mm. okay and just you know i took a show of hands mm. how many of you have uh, computers at home mm. about 30% said mm. computers at home mm. said so how many of you have tablets mm. 5% tablet mm. how many of you have smartphones mm. 95% of 6th graders mm. in panipat mm. small middle class b sort of city mm. had smartphones mm. so i completely agree with what sanjay is saying mm. you know the next revolution in learning mm. is going it's to be going driven to be by personalization right. uh, affordable smartphones and mm. of course we need we need the internet infrastructure to mm. energize this entire thing mm. go ahead how people innovate the um, mm. solutions mm. there is no internet mm. but they still need to learn mm. so we get more than few thousand orders every week mm. for getting the content on sd card mm. so so and you know sd card is cheap now yes. and so people can get 13 30 gb or 16 gb sd card in 400 500 rupees hmm. get our content on that hmm. and ship it to them in their house sometimes no courier is taking it so we have to send it through normal post but then at that sd card and their uh, smartphone hmm. makes it a complete class hmm. and so democratizing education hmm. this is the movement has come with the help of smartphone which mm. is an an enabler mm. and then as the internet improves mm. there will be more and more connectivity but people have found the way mm. to learn through pen drive through sd cards which is a huge mm. industry as much mm. so when we used to ship say 100 a week now we are shipping thousands a week to their homes i see no, so, so that's a that's way to think about being an enterprising nation that you yes, always yes. find a way around the challenge yeah, that you yeah, have right. i always find that remarkable <laughs> about us <laughs> yeah. as, as as a society uh, you know uh, there was also i, I was just uh, among the things that i came across while researching this is is uh, and this is a, basically a study that they've done in america on how 
uh, and it struck me was important is because one of the parents called us up with this saying that how technology is playing a very crucial role for those with learning disabilities, learning challenges as well, and sort of making it more personal and engaging the student more and more beyond what a teacher can do in a classroom of 40, 50, and so on and, and so forth. And she was very keen that we sort of spend some time talking about this also. So Mr. Chai, if I could sort of just bring you in at, at this point. This is, of course, another section which has also been left behind traditionally, also now standing up and saying, hey, here's something that we can be part of and gain a lot out of as well. So that's where the point which I was referring in the last conversation is that when you look at the learning, you know, for, you know, for a moment think about technology as an enabler and when you look at learning and if we look at these the disabled people which you uh, like of them and allow them to learn, that's where the whole research aspect come into the mm. picture that how are you actually lifting up the learning. So for a visually disabled people, how are you actually getting into the researching to find out that how that learning content or learning curriculum is designed in that basis. So, for example, if you look at our school system, our learning cur curriculum is very well defined. It's still a manual based. There's no, you know, there's no technology which really happens there. And then when you actually see the similar mm. strata of people mm. learning the, in the similar way, how would you lift up the whole content uh, intervention there? Mm. So I think the important point which we need to also start thinking now is to really, how do we make it more inclusive? Mm. And how do we do more learning engagement, right. content-based research to right. have inclusive Going How through. do we make it more inclusive? That yeah. will always be something that we keep, I, I guess, we, we keep innovating and keep coming up with new ideas. But Chantan, I'm able to ask you what was sort of the, the what next? Like, how do we oh, do all this? We are entering into a very exciting uh, mm. age, mm. the likes of which I think mm. we haven't seen before. Mm. Mm. So I think I would say uh, technology integration in schools mm. uh, has so far historically followed a certain path. Mm. Uh, first, you had, of course, no technology. Hmm. And then we started having uh, computer labs in schools. Hmm. And kids used to troop to the computer lab hmm. and used to learn how to do basic or word processing Color and so and on. And so on, right? It was a big deal at that yeah. time. Okay. Hmm. Now every school has yeah. computer labs. Nobody talks about it anymore. Hmm. The next phase was when you got smart class into hmm. the classroom. Hmm. So the classroom got energized. Hmm. And I think we are on the, on the threshold of this revolution hmm. where the backpack hmm. is going to be replaced by a tech back, I would say. Uh, I'll give you uh, three examples of what we do in the Shibnara schools. <coughs> uh, we have online content which is available to the student at home prior to coming into the class. So it's it's a flipped class. Mm. Uh, flipped class was something which has happened for probably decades. Right. Uh, it's about the professor in a college mm -hmm. uh, giving out the right. content which you should be prepared Quite for. But this is itself. online content. Mm. There are videos. It's gamification. <laughs> children enjoy doing it, they get a lot of concepts clear before they come into class. Mm. And then the discussion the next day is centered around what is not understood right. or what needs to be shared. Right. So there's a second level of understanding something I that see. you worked with earlier. So that's one sort of an aspect. <laughs> the other aspect is video capture. So mm. we capture uh, classes which happen inside the class, inside the class in, the, in the school. Mm. Uh, the teacher can review that, I see. see about her own teaching methodology. Mm. The student can go back when the student was not attentive in a particular class. Mm. Or if the student was absent, you got right. access to it, it's stored on cloud, so you can right. look at it. So that's right. another level. I see. The third thing is a uh, clicker, like uh, Amitabh Bachchan on Khan Banega mm -hmm. Kaurpati. So the teacher just has to figure right. what are the concepts that mm. she needs to mm. have been understood as mm. learning objectives at the end of the class. Mm. And then you do a clicker test. The right. children love it. The, you right. get a feedback on how well that's been learned and you also know what hasn't been learned. Right. You can go back to it. I, I yeah. just want to take a quick break at this point. There's a lot more that we're discussing as we talk about technology in the classrooms. These are classrooms not of the future anymore, but classrooms of the present. Classrooms are going to be a reality in the school that perhaps you went to very soon. We're sitting a quick break back. Looking at the role of technology in education, we've seen classrooms, uh, perhaps not of today, but definitely of tomorrow, not in the distant future, and all that technology will enable our students to do. This is uh, spend some time now looking at what this means for our teachers. Historically, of course, Mr. Jav, we've seen that whenever the technology has sort of come into new areas, there's always been some sort of apprehension, perhaps understandable, you know, and some sort of reluctance as well. Now we're talking about totally modern classrooms, and you know, the teachers sort of maybe stepping back a little, the student takes center stage yet again along with technology. 
What does it mean for a modern age teacher? In my view, I think the role of a teacher is changing to become enablers. Mm. Uh, when we're talking about adaptive, when we're talking about personalized mm. learning, which is what the future is, while I continue to believe that mm. we need to make more inclusive sure. team around that. Sure. Uh, but now in the classroom, what's happening is that the students are coming well prepared with their mm. whole, whatever is given as their homework, right. whatever is given as a, their work to do. Then the teacher starts actually enabling them mm. to get the learning outcome. Mm. So there, there, there was a thing of divide, which mm. is their adoption in terms of taking the technology. Mm. But I think incrementally teachers are becoming more and more, uh, more and more progressive. They are right. looking at technology as a means, but they know that if we don't do it, they will be mm. left behind. They will be left behind, exactly. Yeah. Karan Gopal, is that fair to sort of say that there's... Uh, teachers who don't believe that technology is central mm. uh, to the way education systems must run are actually like dinosaurs. They're mm. going to get extinct very fast. Mm. I think the second point is it's only a transitory 10, 15 year sort of phase because mm. the next generation of He's teachers already will anyway equipped. will be. Right. right. And I think the interesting thing for teachers to also see, and I keep telling that to our teachers, that you know, the teachers need to figure what Google can't do. Hmm. And that's we always have this yes, discussion about what Google can't do. So I'd I love said, to know what Google can't do actually Google, myself. Google, <laughs> Google can't hug at least for some time. <laughs> yeah. And I think it's very important that's that important the emotional, right. social right. aspect right. of right. being in a school, in a exactly. physical space of a school is a huge area. And that's right. also another reason children go to school. And that's a very important point. And I think it. that's right. a point which right. ultimately uh, cannot be ceded right. to technology. Right. And that's a very important area. Right. So there is a lot teacher can do. Right. Go ahead. I can give you a case study example. Hmm. There are about 5,000 teachers in Mauritius which has adapted iProf platform in classrooms. Hmm. Content management or basically what you call assessment life cycle. Hmm. A, student, a teacher spends about 30% of the time in creating assessment, hmm. then taking the answer sheets from 40 students hmm. and checking manually all 40 of them. Correct. So that is almost two to two and a half hours every day a teacher spends. Hmm. Now that all has been automated. Hmm. So teacher now can create a uh, assessment hmm. out of the question bank which is there hmm. in about five minutes, hmm. which she used to take about an hour. Hmm. Now the answer sheets when they are submitted, hmm. because the tablet has been adapted in the classrooms, hmm. it takes a second. The moment it is submitted, same time you get your answers right. and your results. Right. And grade book is tabulated. Right. So much paperwork was there. A hmm. school in Faridabad has adapted completely the hmm. um, iProf tablet solution. Hmm. It's a, across the board. Hmm. It has gone. Hmm. And they are saying they are saving about one and a half to two hour of teacher's time every day. Hmm. So te it's a huge opportunity for teachers to adapt it hmm. and make their life simpler. So Shandra, uh, fair to say something there for everyone? You know, uh, one of the things that I, I have observed hmm. is firstly, t the teachers in India are hmm. very innovative. Hmm. Hmm. Okay, And the way they have adopted to technology hmm. uh, is really interesting. Hmm. Today, if you look at a resume of a prospective teacher, in the resume you have a line hmm. saying, you know, I'm experienced with using smart class, mm. for example. So they're using this to their advantage for job, upward job mobility. Okay. And, you know, to this point of yours that, you know, technology is going to be a threat or a fear. Mm. I don't think technology is going Needs to replace right. teachers. Right. But teachers using technology hmm. will replace teachers who don't, who use, who don't, right. don't use technology. Sort of like upskilling yourself. I, I think it's also something that our teachers perhaps, you know, traditionally were not sort of doing among an opportunity to do. So perhaps this also sort of gives you a chance to keep abreast with what's happening so internationally use, yeah. in, in the country so and so on. There are two uh, interesting aspects to this. Hmm. Teachers using technology hmm. to upgrade themselves. Hmm. Not just students using technology. Correct. That's Correct. one aspect. Correct. I mean, clearly understood. There's so much online MOOCs and so on out there. Okay. Second aspect is teachers improving their economic uh, condition mm. because now she can do a job in the morning in the school mm. come back right. get onto an e-learning platform right. and tutor students from across the world exactly. so right. if you're talking about teacher shortages right. in a virtual world there are no teacher there, shortages there no because teacher so shortages are, loca are localized right i'm starting to run out of time yeah. so so I'll, I'll end on this that you know the uh, we asked maths teachers who mm. are coming for interviews mm. do you know salman khan mm. and do you like salman khan no. So actually, the, the 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 point there is that we are not talking about the Salman Khan. Are you talking about Khan Academy? We are talking yeah. about Khan. So if a teacher <laughs> doesn't moment, know, for a you had me flummoxed. I was so, like, why? <laughs> no. If the teacher doesn't know, a math teacher doesn't know the right. Khan Academy, right. she's right. already left behind. Right. You know. And that's so of course it's, most that's of times students are leading teachers here right. in technology right. adoption. Students right. have adapted much more than tech teacher has. Right.
which is perhaps again the generation factor generation comes into play but i guess that everyone can keep up you can at least yeah, try right. <laughs> and keep up that's not really impossible but thanks the gentleman for taking our time to speak to us today it's been a pleasure so that's of course the big focus that we are going to be having over the next couple of weeks and months the role of technology in education how much is too much can it ever be too much how do teachers adapt and what about students now at the center of these modern classrooms keep your thoughts coming in for the moment